Uh, hi everyone, uh, my name is Jong-un Park and I'm a PhD student under the supervision of Professor Robert Heath. Uh, in this talk, we are uh, propose some uh, base station cluster patterns for semi-static corporations, and which, is apply which can be applied in the irregular network topologies. Uh, this, is work, this work is joint work in the uh, Dr. Namin Lee and the Professor Robert Heath. Uh, base station cooperation is actually known as an effective approach for improving the edge user's performances. However, due to the overhead associated with coordinating base stations, the practical approach to the cooperation is a base station clustering, uh, which means that only, we only include only limited number of base stations in our uh, cooperative sets. However, uh, in clustering-based approach, uh, the value of the cooperation heavily depends on uh, the, the location of the user. For example, in the right-hand side case, uh, the, the user is located in the cluster edge. So in, it, in this case, the dominant interference uh, mainly degrades the performance of the user, so the, uh, the cooperation benefits uh, becomes uh, null. Uh, uh, there are two main approaches for base station clustering. The, the first one is the static clustering. Uh, inspired by a, a predefined backhaul network. In this approach, the base stations are coordinated by the predefined coordination pattern. So, this pattern is not changed by uh, not changed by a user. The key weakness of this clustering is that, uh, of course, it, of course, it's very uh, simple uh, cooperation method. But the key weakness is that uh, the user can locate in the cluster edge like this, and this user. Uh, even in the uh, cooperative set, this user's performance is uh, severely degraded by uh, this dominant interference. The second main approach is the uh, uh, dynamic clustering. Dynamic clustering uh, is that the philosophy of the dynamic clustering is that the user itself make uh, a clustering by choosing uh, the multiple closest base stations. Uh, so, uh, by doing this, the user always can locate at the cluster center, uh, which can be uh, well protected by the auto cluster interference. The problem is that uh, there can be base station conflict, which occurs when the two different users like this uh, uh, want to simultaneously want to connect the same base stations. Uh, to resolve this, uh, the significant scheduling complexity is required. So, uh, in this talk, we focus on the semi-static clustering, which is placed between the middle, between the two main approaches. The main idea of the semi-static clustering is to use the multiple predefined cluster patterns, like this. So, this pattern and this pattern is simultaneously used. So, which uh, use a, and this pattern and this pattern will use a different resource respectively. Therefore, each user in here uh, can, be, can have some opportunity to, be, to become a cluster center user. To get intuition, uh, we look at semi-static clustering in the square grid network. Uh, obviously, if we employed like four cluster patterns, a uh, whole network can be covered and the active user can communicate with its uh, two neural nests base stations, which means they are, are protected from the dominant interference. And obviously, uh, we require four uh, different resources uh, to be assigned a different cluster pattern. But what about the irregular network topologies? Uh, in practice, actually, the network topology is highly irregular, and so the cluster pattern is uh, not obvious as in the uh, square grid network. So uh, we need uh, some framework to design the cluster pattern in irregular network topologies. And now we, exploring, now we explore how to do it. Uh, the key idea of the proposed method is uh, exploiting the geometric relationship between uh, the Brownoi tessellations and the Delaunay triangulations. Uh, briefly speaking, the Delaunay triangulations is a dual graph of the first order Brownoi cells and actually, simultaneously, it can characterize of the, the existence of the second order Brownian cell like this. So, for example, if these two vertex has a connection uh, in the Delaunay triangulation graph, 
uh, the second of the boronine regions of, uh, associated with these two points is not empty. Now, there were several work that used the second of the boronine region actually. Uh, the key difference is that uh, from our work is that the previous work assumes that the BS conflict is already solved and uh, they, uh, they focused on uh, so they assume that BS complex is already solved and focus on the analysis uh, by using tools from stochastic geometry, for example. But in our work, we proposed how to solve the BS complex problem in a systematic way by leveraging the, the geometric property of the Delaunay triangulation. As a key idea, uh, we adopt the edge coloring in graph theory. Edge coloring is simply the allocating the uh, color to a graph so that there is uh, no vertex that share the same colored edge. So for example, this is the, actually the examples of the uh, results of the edge coloring and we can see, we can easily observe that there is no vertex that uh, share the two edges uh, who are colored by the same colors. Now uh, we explain our method by using a motivational example. We consider the inverse triangle network plane uh, like this. And the first step is that to tessellate the network plane into multiple second of the ordinary cells, and uh, it can be tessellate each of the each of the second of the ordinary region like this. And next, uh, we draw a Delaunay triangulation graph, uh, which is corresponding to this uh, second of the ordinary triangle second of the ordinary regions and solve the edge coloring problem for the, this drawn graph. And here we treat the color as the pattern, so, so we can observe that no uh, vertex share no the, the same patterns like this. So D0 uh, is meet the P pattern 1, pattern 2, and pattern 3, but there is no, share, there is no same, pa same pattern uh, which is connected to a same vertex. Then uh, we allocate a different time frequency resource uh, to each different pattern and makes a, a base station uh, coordination set according to the designed pattern, uh, like this. By the rules of the edge coloring, there is no base station conflict problem, and every user in, the, in each second of the Brunner region can connect to the uh, two nearest base stations. And this is the uh, network map of uh, serving. The each of each of the user uh, according uh, by using the proposed method, and as we explained just before, uh, there is no BS conflict problem uh, by uh, rules of the edge coloring. So in a general network, we follow the same procedure basically. Uh, so the basically tessellate the network plane with the second of the cell and draw a Tulonet triangulations graph and uh, solve the edge coloring problem for the drawn graph. Here, uh, one important question is that how many visuals are required in the network when you apply the proposed method? Actually, this question is already answered uh, by the famous Beijing theorem, which states that uh, the maximum degree, which means uh, the maximum number of connect edge in one vertex determines the number of colors. So in this figure, we can uh, we can figure out that this vertex, which has the maximum degree equals to five, determines the number of required color. Uh, this implies that the only one vertex can cause a huge resource uh, use, and for this region, some edges should be cut. And on the cut edges, uh, there is no resource allocation for the cut edge, cut, cutted edge. And more uh, detailed explanations about the edge cutting method is, can be found in the journal version of this paper. Now we show the performance. By using the proposed clustering, we observed that 12.5% uh, percent, percent, uh, performance gain at the low SIL threshold, which is 0 dB. Uh, compared to the fractional frequency reuse method. Uh, here are the conclusions. Uh, we propose the uh, framework to design the base, cl base station cluster patterns in irregular network. And using the proposed method, 
Each user can communicate with the two nearest base stations while the base station conflict problem is prevented by using the edge cloning method. Uh, this ends of uh, my presentations. Thank you for your attention. This ends of my final presentation. Thanks. <laughs>